Please note that filming text on the whiteboard requires extremely bright studio lighting. Subsequently, sunglasses were worn during the filming of this video to prevent damage to my retinas. A note on how to use these sessions. Jot down the notes as we go, so we'll help you learn the material in a more interactive way and you can use them as study notes later. Also, in the small chance that the discrepancy arises between the professor's notes and mine, always go with your professor. They're the one grading you. Lastly, any examples or analogies used in the session are not meant to support or criticize politics, religion, or lifestyle. They're merely learning tools to help understand the material. Alright, guys and girls. It's time to get cracking. All right, so today we're gonna to be talking about elimination reactions. And elimination reactions are very similar to the nucleophilic substitution reactions we learned last chapter. And so if you have your SN1, SN2 reactions down, it's gonna make learning elimination reactions so much easier because there's so many parallels between the two chapters. Nucleophilic substitutions, those are called SN1 and SN2. Elimination reactions are called E1 and E2. Okay, so very similar sounding names, and they also follow a lot of the same general principles and have a lot of the same players. Okay, so if you don't have your SN1 and SN2 reactions down just yet, you might want to go back to the nucleophilic substitutions chapter, refresh that, get those down, and then come back to do the elimination reactions chapter. It'll be a lot easier that way. But hey, if you already have your SN1, SN2 reactions down, then awesome. Let's go ahead and get started with our elimination reactions now. All right, so let's get started with the general reaction for these elimination reactions. And just like always, I don't want you guys to get bogged down with the details for what's going on here. I just want you guys to get the big picture for what's going on in an elimination reaction. Okay, so first things first, what type of compound is going to undergo an elimination reaction? All right, so why I'm asking you this is because it's important to be able to look at a type of compound and say, hey, that type of compound is most likely gonna undergo this type of reaction. Like if you look at an alkene, a double bond, you should be able to say, hey, an alkene is probably gonna undergo an addition reaction. Or if you look at an alkyl halide, you'd say, hey, an alkyl halide is probably gonna undergo a nucleophilic substitution reaction. Okay, so what type of compound is gonna undergo an elimination reaction? Well, let me give you a little hint. Because I told you that elimination reactions and nucleophilic substitution reactions are very similar. They have a lot of the same players, right? So hey, what type of compound undergoes a nucleophilic substitution reaction? An alkyl halide. So we're also going to see an alkyl halide undergo an elimination reaction. Okay, so let's go ahead and put up an alkyl halide up here. All right, so here we have an alkyl halide, an alkyl group connected to a halogen, also known as a haloalkane, call it whichever one you want. The point is that if you ever see an alkyl halide, now you should be thinking, hey, an alkyl halide, this can undergo either a nucleophilic substitution reaction or an elimination reaction, right? Don't worry about whether it's gonna do one or the other for right now, we'll talk about all that later. For now, just realize that an alkyl halide can undergo an elimination reaction. Okay, so do me a favor and draw in one of the hydrogens on this carbon right here. Okay, so I know there's three hydrogens coming off of this thing, but just draw one of these hydrogens. All right, so the reason why I had you draw out this hydrogen is because this is a special hydrogen known as a beta hydrogen. Don't worry about writing this down for right now. We're gonna talk about it in detail in just a minute. For right now, I just want you guys to understand that this is a special hydrogen known as a beta hydrogen. And the reason why it's special is because this hydrogen is going to get eliminated. It's gonna get ripped off of this alkyl halide. And this is why we call this an elimination reaction because we eliminate a hydrogen we use those electrons to form a double bond here and kick off a leaving group, okay? We're gonna talk about the mechanism for how this works later. For now, just understand that we're gonna eliminate a hydrogen, take off this hydrogen, use these electrons to form a bond here and kick off a leaving group. So hey, you guys, what do we know that can rip off a hydrogen, that can take a hydrogen off somebody? What kind of thing does that? 
a base, right? The job of a base is to take a hydrogen from somebody. Okay, so for an elimination reaction, you're going to take an alkyl halide and you're going to react this with a base. And I'm going to abbreviate this as B with two electrons connected to it, saying that a base can use two electrons to pick up a hydrogen, to rip this hydrogen off, so that these electrons can form a double bond between this carbon and this carbon, which is going to kick off this as a leaving group. Let me show you what the product of this is going to look like. Okay, so what I said is, this base is going to come pick up this hydrogen, use those electrons to form a double bond between this carbon and this carbon, which would be this carbon and this carbon, so we'll form a double bond there. And we also said that this bromine is going to get kicked off as a leaving group. And this base just picked up that hydrogen. Okay, so the reason why we call this an elimination reaction is because a base comes to pick up this hydrogen, eliminates it from this alkyl halide. That causes these electrons to form a double bond here and the bromine gets kicked off, okay? All right, so one last thing to add to this general reaction is just a little heat. So go ahead and put a triangle here that stands for heat, because a lot of times to get a successful elimination reaction, we just need to add some heat to this thing. Okay, so now that we've talked about the general reaction, let's go ahead and talk about the key players involved in an elimination reaction now. All right, so just like with SN1 and SN2 reactions, where we talked about the key players involved in those reactions, we're going to do the same thing here with elimination reactions, because a lot of the players here are the same as with SN1, SN2. So do you guys remember the three main players involved in an SN1, SN2 reaction? Well, we had something with lone pairs, a nucleophile, that could come in to attack an electrophile that had a leaving group attached, right? So we had something with lone pairs, which was a nucleophile. We had an electrophile and a leaving group. We're going to have pretty much exactly the same thing here. Let me show you. Okay, so you can say that we have a nucleophile here, something with lone pairs, except what I want you guys to do is go ahead and cross out nucleophile because we are going to have something with lone pairs here, but it's not going to act as a nucleophile. Our thing with lone pairs is going to be a base, okay? So these two things are very similar. A nucleophile has lone pairs, a base has lone pairs, but they're going to act differently, okay? A base's job is to do what? To take a hydrogen off somebody, right? A nucleophile, on the other hand, goes in to attach to somebody, okay? So two things here, very similar. Both of these have lone pairs, but they have separate jobs. In elimination reactions, we're going to have a base with lone pairs to go and take a hydrogen, take a hydrogen off our alkyl halide instead of attacking it like a nucleophile did. Okay, so remember, in SN1, SN2 reactions, we had nucleophile, electrophile, and leaving group. Okay, so for an elimination reaction, we're going to have a base, and the other two are going to be exactly the same, an electrophile and a leaving group. All right, so these three players should look pretty much exactly the same as for nucleophilic substitution reactions. But I'm going to show you one more player here that you need to have to do an elimination reaction that we didn't need for a nucleophilic substitution reaction. Okay, so this player, we actually already introduced him as this special hydrogen right here. Do you guys remember the name for this special hydrogen? We call this guy a beta hydrogen. Let's write this down. Okay, so this hydrogen is known as a beta hydrogen, and a beta hydrogen is a hydrogen that's on a carbon adjacent to the electrophile. Okay, so that's a lot to say in words. Let's go ahead and write this down real quick, and then we can draw a picture to illustrate what I'm talking about.